We're holding you over here on your days of Manalev. We're discussing the if a master could say to a slave, Asi mi veni could he say to his slave, his canonic slave, I want you to work for me, meaning I'm going to take your earnings, but I'm not going to support you. Meaning, so how is he going to live? How is he going to cover his, his, his food and his other needs? He'll have to go beg. Does the master have a right to do that? So Mara says, Lebe Ketanoi, it seems to be Tzmachlok's Tanoi. Rav Shimigam Lomer, Yochel Eved Lomer Lerabo, B'Shnei Batsoris. A Canaanite slave could say to his master in famine years. Batsoris means to, with his lack of food. O Parnasani, either support me, meaning cover my material needs, O Tzieri Lecheris, or free me, emancipate me. The slave has a right to say this to his master. This is Rav Shimigam Now, if the master is actually allowing the slave is, is, is to take his earnings, to cover his needs, I mean, how could the slave say, either support me or free me? If you say he, the master is withholding his earnings and, not, and he's having difficult, difficulty surviving, he says, look, if you take my wages, either support me or let me go. The Chacham say no. The master has a right to dictate. It's evidently what, what seems to be the argument. Romelil says the master does not have the right. The Chacham say, Harishus biad rabo. The master does have the right. My lab, it seems to be, this is the issue. This is the issue they're arguing. The Marsa of Yocho, according to Shim Gamliel, according to the Chachomim, he can withhold the earnings and say, I will not support you. Or Marsa of Eni Yocho. And Rav Shim Gamliel says he cannot do that. Therefore, the slave could say to the master, either support me or free me, one or the other. So, Marcia, the Tisboro. Why, why aren't we arguing, what, what's, why aren't we arguing about the, the fact that uh, either feed me or free me? Why is it about the, uh, whether the owner can be master can, can not really feed him or not? No, 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 that's not the question. If the master withholds the earnings, right. does he have a right, does that, that obligate the master now to compensate the slave, because how is he supposed to live? He has no right to put him in, 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 a, in, in a predicament where he has to go beg for his food. Man, the slave doesn't, doesn't earn, he doesn't have to feed him. But to take his earnings and say, now work it out yourself, does the master have a right to do that for the sla to the slave? Well, I understand, but, but what about the, 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 the plain argument here about just whether the uh, slave could say to the master, free me. Yeah, but what's the basis? So of course, he can't say that. Of course, what? Slave wants to be free. Say that, no, because he's he, evidently he's not feeding. He's, he's taking his earnings. That's why. Uh, That's what he's saying. He's, he's not saying free me. He says, but first he says, oh, right. either support me or free me. So wha what context are we speaking about? Uh, the master is withholding his earnings, okay. and he, he's taking it. He's, he's, not, he's not helping out financially. So Chum say no, the master still has that right. So it seems to me this is the argument of Mr. Is it even to be considered that the master has a right to withhold his earnings and tell him to work it out himself? Hi, O Parnasenu, O Lecherus. He shouldn't say, either support me or, f or emancipate me. What he should say is, either support me or give me my earnings. That's what he should say to the master. What is free him? If we're speaking about the, the slave is earning and the master is withholding his earnings, he should say, either feed me, support me, because if you're holding my earnings, support me, and if you don't want to support me, give, give, give me my earnings. Right. Not free me. That's what the Gemara says. Hi, O Parnaseo, You should give me my earnings to cover my, 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 my financial needs. Me boy, lay. That's what the, the slave should say to the master. It's evidently it's clear this is not what I'm, that's not what I'm really speaking about where the master is withholding the earnings, and that's why the slave is responding this way to the master. That's firstly. Secondly, the old, if the, s the master has no right to withhold the earnings of the slave and tell him to work it out on his own, so what do we have to speak about it during famine years? Talk about ordinary times. The master has no right to do this to the slave. Elo, so what, evidently, what are we speaking about? Hochebaskiron. 
the master says to the slave, take your earnings and let your earnings cover your sustenance, whatever you need. And beca because it's Shnei Batsores, because it's famine years, Lucipic, his earnings aren't sufficient to purchase the, 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 the food that he needs. So he can't make ends meet. Yeah. No, no, we'll see in a moment. Shnei Batsores is a much more serious time. Because there he really needs communal help. During the good times, or not terrible times, people will, will help him out. But during famine years, who do you help out? You know, you help out your own, you don't help out strangers. So the question is, if the slave is seen by other Jews as he's worthy of supporting other Jews who will help him out, they'll have Rahmanus on him. But if the master doesn't have Rahmanus on him, you know, other people say, you know, he's not one of ours. He's, he's not a full Jew. He's a semi-Jew. Rav Shimlil Sovar Oparnaseni, he says to the master, the master is allowing him to take his earnings, but the earnings are not sufficient because it's famine years. Otsin l'cherus, ki hechi d'chozli yitshim rachno So people should see my situation, l'av rachmonus, because they're going to see me as what? As a Jew. Even though he's not a Jew yet, but if, he, if I have a right to say, free me, so they can already see me as what? As one of their own. Rabbonin Sabri, Iman Racham and Nechori. The people of Rachmanis, they have Rachmanis, other Jews, if you're already a free man. If you're a free man, then they'll treat you as one of their own. Avdi, excuse me, Iman Racham and Nechori, Evan Namim Rachim, Rachumim Rachim. Since factually he's Chayv Mitzvah Kisho, right? He has the same obligation identically as a woman, and in terms of practice, he lives like a Jew, right? The slave lives like a Jew. Therefore, the one who has Rachmanus on, on the emancipated person, the Ben Chorin, he'll have the same Rachmanus. Therefore, this other mm -hmm. aspect, the dictate to the master to free him, he has that, that doesn't begin. That's the position of Chachamim. But everybody agrees that the master definitely does not have a right to withhold the earnings and tell him, work it out for yourself. That he doesn't have the right. He doesn't have does not does not have that right. If he's taking his earnings, then he has to support him. But he has the right to say, take your earnings and work it out yourself. That he has. This is proving that that it's a that it's a an advantage or disadvantage to, to get free from his slave. Nothing. That's not what we're talking about. Why are we bringing all no, this up? Yeah, we're trying to figure out the case. Why could the slave dictate to the master, say to the master, free me? Why should you be freed? Because it's Shnei Batsores. Because otherwise the people are going to, he's going to starve to death. That, that's Rav Shemagam Leel. Nobody's going to have Rachmanus on him, unless he's a Ben Chorin. The Chum say no, we disagree. They're arguing on, on, on the reality of, 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 his, of, of his predicament. Okay? Toshma. The Omar Rav. Hamagdishi de Avdo. Okay? A person who consecrates just the hands. So the Evid himself is not consecrated. But the hands of the Evid are, are, are consecrated. So now, those hands, whatever they produce, earnings. The earnings are, are, are hegdish. Right? Also Evid lovev ochel. That slave, he borrows and he eats, meaning he supports himself, from what he borrows... Now then he earns whatever we'll see in his earnings and he, with those earnings he'll repay what he borrowed. Now, Kamar's going to ask a question on the base. If, if he could take that, those earnings and repay his creditors, what does he have to borrow? Let him er, work and take his earnings and support himself. If, if it's said, how could he pay a creditor? Money he earns, just, how, does he, how, will he, how does he get it? He'll break the right? It says, He earns and he pays. He pays the debt. So it's, that, that's the question. If it's Hegdish, how does he pay the debt? The right, exactly. answers the question. Shmami no. So here from this particular bright, from Rav's statement, we were able to infer. Yochel Rav Lomel Ebed Asayim Ivein Zonoch. I mean, why does the slave, right? If, if the master is consecrating his hands 
and the earnings are hegdish. That means what is, what, is, what is the master doing? He's locking him out. He's causing that he should not be able to benefit from his earnings. He has nothing to eat. If he would have consecrated his hands, he's able to earn and it would be sufficient. Correct? Now, because he consecrated his hands, which he has a right to, he took away his earnings. It's like saying, I say me, I'm going to take your earnings and I'm going to throw you to the dogs. It's evident that he can't do that. He can say, I will not support you. Right? Consecrating his hands is the equivalent of taking his earnings. Because now we say, you're on your own. So, the, seemingly from Rob's statement, the master has that right. Because there's no other way to survive. Right? right? It's like going to beg. Right. person could do that. that. That's what Rob is saying. Right? So then the slave can't use his hands for anything that's not... Well, right the we have, but, we, but we have a con contradiction here. In terms of supporting himself, he can't support himself with his earnings because the earnings are hegdish. But yet it says, but it, when it comes to now that he has to pay back the debt, he could want... He's bar he earns and he repays the debt. Well, if he could borrow to repay the debt, why can't he earn, earn to, su to, 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 to support himself? And then when he goes free... He's case? not going free. But if he does go free... He goes free. That, that's a separate discussion. No, 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 no. It's not keeping me the hegdish. The Mara says, he, if, if the master emancipates him, he's what? He's not, his hands aren't hegdish. Not... We're speaking about when he consecrated his hands, the master is feeding him, is supporting him. Samar says, Iyochi, so if he's supporting him, Lamai, Lova Vochel. So why why is he borrowing to eat? Right? The master is supporting him. He has no right? Good. And if he has no right, how does he when he earns later, how does he take that money, which would have been Hegdish money, and and repay the, the, the creditors that he borrowed from, right? So Maras, if the master is feeding him and supporting him, why is he loaf of ochel? How does he have a right to borrow? And to, there's no reason for him to borrow and eat. Because the, the master is supporting him. La dofa. Mean for the extra. If the master is only giving him enough, the bare minimum. But he, but he wants to have more than the bare minimum. So he's able to borrow... And, and the cover later what he had eaten more than the bare minimum. That's La Dofa, for the extra. So Rabbi, how does a slave like this borrow? I, I don't understand. If, if we say that the slave is his master's chattel, he has no economic rights, he has no ability to own anything. Does it? Whatever he owns belongs to the master. Wait, 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 wait. So what kind of a borrower is he? Where is his capacity to repay? If a slave earns something, the earnings immediately belong to the master. This slave, who's his master regarding his earnings? Hegdish. He when, when the master consecrated his hands, he transferred all the rights of earnings to Hegdish. Hegdish is now the master for earnings. And that's, that's the first question. If the master would be supporting him and he would consecrate him, he has no right to, to borrow, to add, to, to, to supplement his, his, his needs. All of a sudden now it's Hegdish, he can, why can't he? If before it was enough, why, 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 is it, why is it permitted now? This seems, seems to be, would not be in agreement with his new master regarding his earnings. Because the owner transferred the rights, his, the earning rights, to, to Hegdish. It still doesn't deal with my question. Whether, it does deal with your question. Whether the master is Hegdish or whether no, sir. But the Mars going to. It doesn't matter. Wait, 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 no wait. The slave has no ownership right. He doesn't have no ownership right. He doesn't have ownership right. He doesn't have any ownership right. So how can he borrow? If someone has no ownership rights, how can he be a borrower? You could be a borrower if the lender is agreeable to lend. It's, it's a fact. You borrowed. Where's the capacity to be paid? Wait, wait, wait. So that, that we'll discuss in a moment. We'll discuss that in a moment. Okay. For, I mean, we have to get back to the to the crux of the problem. Wait a sec. We have to get back to the crux of the problem. If factually, we're able to understand that his earnings are not hegdish, as the Gemara will say, because he's earning, he pays back, he earns pachs mishal bepruto less than a cent. So less than that cent, who owns the, the, the less than a cent? He does. No. Not the owner. Hegdish owns it. Less than a cent. Yes, less than a cent. Hegdish owns that. His hands belong to Hegdish, right. except so if it's a Shavit Pruta, it assumes Kedusha. Right. 
It's less than Shabbat food. We discussed this. It's all. It's it's hegdish, but it's hegdish without kedusha. So monetarily, it's their money. But it does not assume uh, off limits level unless it's what unless it's minimally a penny. Off limits level. To, to any to anybody, you're not permitted to benefit from it. It assumes a kedusha status. That's called an elo. You're not permitted to benefit, benefit something which assumes a kedusha status. No, wait. He's going to be paying it off. Poch's supposed to be shavu pruta. He earns less than a penny. He pays the creditor. And again, I mean, it, 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 does, it doesn't accrue. It doesn't accumulate the money. That, that's what it's happening. Basically, he has the ability to pay off. But it's only because Hegdish, Heg, Hegdish is an that. agreement to this. Right. Okay. Hegdish initially is an agreement. That's Mar's question. How could he supplement his, his, his needs? The original master wouldn't have permitted it. So why, why, why is he permitted to do it now? The more says because Hegdish is agreement, in agreement to this. Although the original master was actually was milking him t- t- till the last penny. But Hegdish, what's their interest? Their interest is enhancing his physical status. Because what's Hegdish doing with a slave? They, they're ultimately, they're going to they're sell him. So the value, t- the value of slave to an ma- reg- ordinary master is pr- productivity. What could I get out of him in terms of my investment? The Hegdish, the value is what could they sell him for? So the more they're able to enhance him, he has greater value. So they will be in agreement that he should be able to borrow and supplement his, his, his needs to be physically to be in better shape. Because ultimately they want to sell him and get a higher price. That's the most answer. Why, why wouldn't Hegdish benefit from his productivity? Because they... Because Hegdish does normally any, whenever you consecrate something, you consecrate a table. What's, what, what's Hegdish do with your table? It's only means to to to, to, to get value. No, but the, the slave's hands are now belonging to Hegdish, which means everything he produces. But they're not unless they need slaves. Hegdish, ha, you have ten slaves. Hegdish doesn't need need need, need a, a team of slaves. They don't need this. When you consecrate something, it's all. It's only. A, it's like a pass through. It's a means for Hegdish to acquire money value to cover other expenses that they have. The master has a set of tasks. I want you to do this knitting to do whatever but this let's job see, But let's say you have a limited amount, number of tasks and you have too many slaves, what do you do? You sell them off. Okay, but that's not what But Hegdish is not, doesn't have that many tasks. They don't have that many tasks. The Levim had, had their, you had masons, you had craftsmen, they did it. Whatever was needed in the base of Migdash, it was done in the most advanced, most uh, expert level. person goes and he, he, he consecrates an ordinary slave. What do you do with him? They, they have enough people to serve in the soup kitchen. They don't need him to serve in the soup kitchen. So what do you do with him? So they sell him off. That's all. Okay, we, we're, we're getting caught up in a, in, in a, in a detail over here. So the Mari asks, Until now, your what your needs were without this additional, without this supplement. Hashta nami tiski loch So at this point, point also, what do you have? Why, why does your income have to be supplemented? And that's where it says hegdish gufi nechalei. Hegdish themselves are in agreement. They're willing. Why? So to enhance the slave, the original owner is is interested purely profit margin. As much as he could get out of him, that's what he wants to get out of him. Hegdish, they want him to increase in value. So they don't mind if he borrows money to buy the extra cheese. Because that would, would be a positive benefit for them. Right. But Wait, but the is going to ask a question. Right. But how, right? See, so bar- on the borrowing is not the question. Right? For him to take the money that Hegdish initially, eat, so let him eat, the Morris is going to say, let him be post, post, we show the pruta. You understand? You're not going to have that, that, that desired effect. Instead, you want him to eat a sufficient amount each time that it should have the, the positive effect. Right. So therefore, that's the reason why he has to borrow that larger amount. But when he repays, he pays in small increments. So Mar asks, Osu porea, kama kama how does he earn and take the earnings and repay the debt, the creditors? Every bit that he earns is hegdish. So how does he repay the creditors? The money's consecrated money. Mar says, but Pulk's supposed to be Shove Pruto. That he earns each time less than a Shove Pruto, less than a penny. So it does not assume a Hegdish status, a Kedusha status. And therefore, although it's the money of Hegdish, it belongs to Hegdish, 
And Hegdish is agreeable to this because initially they were agreeable that he should borrow for their benefit. So every, every time he earns less than a cent, he pays off, he chips away at the debt. Uh, so half a cent is not, is not considered, it, it's considered Hegdish, but it's not, uh, it's not right, it doesn't go to Hegdish right away. In other words, no, it's their asset. But to assume Kedusha, it has to be minimally worth a cent. To so assume a status of Kedusha. Uh-huh. So it's, it is like this, but it has no Kedusha. Therefore, the guy, the guy can, can, it goes to him, he can pay half a cent uh, an hour. And, and Hegdish is agreeable. So who's the debtor, David? Who's the debtor? The debtor is Hegdish is the debtor. Right. You're right. He has no ownership rights. And there's no debt to him. Because he's the chattel of Hegdish. Or he's the chattel, there's a, there's a partnership here. The slave belongs to the original master, but the productivity, the value of his earnings, that he, he passed on to Hegdish because he consecrated his hands. Hegdish is the debtor, then why does Hegdish pay quarter? So Hegdish is not a larger amount. That's important. You have to come with the Hefker Bezden Hefker, Baz Bezden Masner. It's much more complicated. Bezden has to be, I mean, what David is yesterday, he more says, you know, you pay cert- certain wages. It's not simple how you do it. The money's Hegdish. See, if, if you're dealing, let's say, an item for an item, so then we could say the Kedusha transfers onto the item, so therefore it becomes, it loses its Kedusha. But what about the service? A service is not, there's nothing to transfer onto. There you have to get, come out to late Vesden Masne, it's sort of Hefke Vesden Hefke. It's, it's much more complicated. It's, it's easier to do it this way. You know, he, very simple. He earns, uh, he works eight hours, right. and you work it out that every, every minute yeah. has a certain value. Right. And you say to the employer who he's working for, every minute, immediately, the money's transferred to, the, to, his, own, to his master, which is Hegdish. To his, or to, to, to his debtor, to his creditors. Okay, so they work it out, they work it out, post post Mishra the Pruta. No, but isn't the responsibility of Hegdish to feed the slave since his hands are consecrated to a No, the master who consecrated him is feeding him. He's feeding him. But if the master has no means and... No, then no, 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 there's no such thing as no means. He had no right to consecrate him. He had no right to consecrate his hands. That's the equivalent of taking his earnings and saying, now you're on your own. You know, mm-hmm. He's not permitted mm-hmm. to do this. He owns, the, he owns his body. He owns his body. Sure, sure, they could. It, it's an infringement on Hegdish's right. Right? They, they're not able to. Let's say he, he injures the slave, and now the slave can't can't produce. So he's he's the damager. He's maybe be grumble to a degree. I'm not sure. Okay. So, wait one second. So, there's an argument to Rashi and Tosas over what, what exactly is Pulk's post Meshavah Pruta. Rashi <laughs> learns. Pulk's <laughs> post Meshavah Pruta. It's the third narrow line. Ajdo Titztarifa Pruta. Until the money. Adds up to be a pruto. Yifreno, luchayel hegdish apos mishav a pruto. Hegdish does not come upon something that's less than a penny. Okay. So Tosis argues with Rashi. Pirush bekuches. Then hegdish chal apos mishav a pruto. Veikshar Rabbeinu Yitzchok. Rabbeinu Yitzchok asks for a mission in in Bab Metzia. The Tanam Bazov chomish pruto saying says there are five situations where pruto makes a difference. Five. Okay. List the sheish pruta saying. There's a sixth case. It should mention there's a sixth case. It, 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 over there, it, it delineates five applications of pruta. What the, the ramifications of pruta is. But according to Rashi, there's the sixth case where a master consecrates the hands of the slave. That if he earns a cent, he can't pay the de- the, the creditors. But if it's less than a cent, he can. They had Hegdish Chalafos Mishav Pruta. Why is that mentioned over there? 
Therefore, evidently, so that, that's not one. That's not. It's, it's an incorrect application. That that hegdish nachal spokes with shavruta has no relevance to this. Vomiri, the hocha haynu taimo shein vedaj shel mag shiochal spokes with shavruta. Meaning, hegdish is does does is chal spokes with shavruta. It's chal. Is Tosis five case talking about? Or a lesser Over there it says the difference between a pruta now, for instance, to take an oath. If you're a custodian, you have to have, it has to be worth a minimum amount of money for the one who had given it to you to impose a shoe on you. Okay. Let's say he says, you gave me a, he says, I gave you a cent. He's, uh, two cents, he says, you gave me a half a cent. So you're swearing on less than a shoe. There's no shoe. Even though he's a motive in mitzvah. There's no, there's no there's examples of this. But he's saying, he's then saying something interesting. Meaning, he consecrated the hands. He owns the slave. This is what Harvey says. He owns the slave. He never consecrated the slaves that Hegdish has a right in the hands if the earnings are less than a penny. Wait. Right? If they earn a penny, then Hegdish has a right to take it. Less than a post, then he has no right. <coughs> then Hegdish has no right to it. So he's learning. So if you, 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 a person benefits from something that's less than the Shogun Pruta, why does, they, why does they bring a Korban Milo? Because the Xeris Akosov, to have the liability of a Korban Milo, you have to benefit from something that's worth a cent. Is it Hegdish? It's Hegdish. He's all Rabbi Yitzhak Zogan Rashi. When a person consecrates some less than the Shogun Pruta, it has Kedusha. And if you benefit, you're in violation of benefiting something that has Kedusha. However, the liability of, of Korban or Chomesh, you pay a fifth, all that. It has to have a minimum value. That's what he's learning. So what about to pay to use that money to pay to No, pay so it comes out interesting now. So it says that the master, no, according to Rabbi Yitzhak, it's a little difficult. He says, why is he permitted to, to borrow and to repay? Because Hegdish is agreeable because his value is enhanced. Right. Even though the master originally didn't allow him to, have, to supplement what he gave him, but Hegdish is agreeable to would be to be able to. Right. But the money is supplementing is, is, is mm-hmm. the money. He never consecrated him for Hegdish to have a right post Mishavet Pruta. Right? That's what he says. Hegdish does not come upon something that's post Mishavet Pruta. That's what Rashi says. No, Tosis. No. Rashi says it's Hegdish's except if it's less than a penny it doesn't assume a Kedusha status. Okay. But who, who's, 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 who has the ownership rights in the less than the penny? Hegdish. Mm-hmm. Except to assume Kedusha, it has to be minimally a penny. Tosa says no. When he consecrated the slave, it was only when the hands produce a pruta. Otherwise, it's not Hegdish. Uh-huh. It's not Hegdish. But could Kedusha affect something less than Shav Pruta? Uh-huh. It can. Uh-huh. Except when he consecrated the hands, it was only when the hands produce a pruta. So if it belongs to the masters, how could Hector say, well, we want to enhance his value? What, you're going to enhance his value on, on, what, on, on the masters, on his, his account? How do you do this? If you hold that it is less than a show of proof, mm-hmm. okay, Hector should follow, then there would be no way for the slave to re- repay the money unless the owner said anything. Less exactly, than that's the way we're up. That's right. Yeah, but I'm asking a question. So if the post Mishavet Pruta belongs to the master, right? So how does Hegdish, because they want to enhance his value, you're going to pay off that debt with the, with the master's money. Until it assumes a Pruta's value, it's not the Hegdish's. So who, who owns that post Mishavet Pruta? the master is not giving him that extra food. And he normally doesn't give the extra food. So because Hegdish would want him to be enhanced, therefore he had borrow and you're paying from, from the master's account. How do you pay the debt with somebody else's money? Seems to be a little difficult here. Unless you say that since factually the, the one who consecrated wants Hegdish to benefit from it, so even though initially he would not do it, but since ultimately when it, it, it does accumulate the Yeshiva Pruta, it is Hegdish's, so therefore, and the value is Hegdish should ha- have the maximum value, therefore he's agreeable that his post Yeshiva Pruta should cover the debt. It's a dochik. It's a dochik. What? It's not a loophole. It's not a loophole. He never consecrated it for anything. He held it back because otherwise he wouldn't. But, but, but it's a little difficult. 
So you're paying, you're paying off the debt with the master's money. Because it hasn't yet accrued to be a Shabbat Pruta. Yeah, the master could have set the terms of the deal any way he wanted. He could have set the first $5 of production. No, you're right. You're right. 100%. Uh, everything above that is for uh, Yeah. So you don't have to deal with that. So that's another doche. That's another doche. What do you have to say? You're in that. If you say the master, unless you say the average person, his mindset is, since Mila is always a Shabbat Pruta, that's the mindset. Less than Shabbat Pruta, that's not really what he's giving to Hegdish. But he, you're right. He could have said, he would have said specifically, any earnings less than $5, I'm not consecrating for that. So he's like a partner with Hegdish. That's his. Anything more than that is Hegdish's. Okay. And the Gemara says, and it's very logical to say what we're saying now, that what? That when he earns less than a cent, he's taking that, those earnings and paying the debt. <coughs> and we're saying that the master has no right. He has no right to withhold the earnings and tell him, and you cover your own, your own, your own needs. Domer Rav, Hamagdishi Dei Avdo, Osever Osever Ochel. A person who consecrates a slave, the slave he earns, osev ochel. Interesting. Dilo avdo man polachle. Okay, Rav said if a person is magdish avdo, it doesn't say yidei avdo. He was magdish yidei avdo. That slave earns and he takes those earnings directly and, eats the, and he, he benefits from the earnings. Dilo, why? Dilo avdo, man Because if he does, if not for himself, who, who's going to work for him? He has to work to cover his own costs, his own needs. I am Rabbi Shlomo Hach ben Malo ben Yochol, Bobish ene Malo Shapir. We have a contradiction in Rav, right? Rav originally had said that he borrows to to, to cover his needs. And then he earns and to repay. Here he doesn't say that. Here he says he directly, he earns, and he benefits directly from the earnings. So how do we reconcile both statements of Rav? Right? Rav's statements are contradictory. Initially he says, Rav says he cannot benefit from his earnings. It says he borrows to eat. And then when he earns, he pays back. So we said, Pokh spoke to Pruta. And there Rav says, no. The person consecrates his, the hands of his slave. The, the slave earns and those earnings, he supports himself from those earnings. But Rob said before, it's only, only it's, he first has to borrow. And why? Because if not for the slave himself, who's going to work for him? So therefore, he's permitted to directly benefit from his earnings. From that, but it's English. So how do you reconcile both statements of Rav? The first case speaking, it's speaking where the master is supporting him. But it, at what? And it's supplemental. It's supplemental income. That's the reason why he's not permitted to benefit from the Hegdish. Because the master is not withholding his earnings. Because he's, he's, he's replacing his earnings by supporting him. But what about if the master is taking his earnings and is not willing to support him? The master never had a right to do that. So if the master have had a right to do that, the Hegdish is a faulty Hegdish. It's faulty. I can't withhold your earnings and say now you're on your own. So now we've reconciled both statements of Rav. If we say the master has a right where he doesn't support him and he has a right to withhold his earnings, man the boy of Elav Shmamino, any Yochel Shmamino. So the Gemara brings a conclusive proof from Rav that the master has no right to withhold his earnings and not support him. It goes hand in hand. You want to withhold his earnings, you have to compensate him. If you're not willing to compensate him, then he has a right to his earnings. To what point? To the standard that the master sets for the, for the slave to be able to benefit. Correct. 
person who severs the hand of his fellow slave. So, we're dealing with what damages. The slave is the chattel of, of, of another Jew, so it's like damaging his animal. No say shifto. He has to pay for his... Um, no, no. Shifto is his lack of earnings. Of course, now that he, that he cut his hand off, he has to recover from the injury. That's Sheves. Rufuoso, that's his medical, medical bill. The rabble. So the loss of earnings until he, that he has to make up to the master. And he has to pay the master for his medical, his medical recovery. Vosa Eved Nizum in that stalker. And now, who's going to feed the master? The, earn, the master has no earnings while he's in the recovery mode. The master's re- receiving the, the medical costs from the damager, and also he's being compensated for what he's not earning. And the slave, what's going to sustain the slave? He's, he's, he's supported by, from charity. So evidently, I mean, if, if the master's taking the shevis, that's the compensation for the not working. So it's like that's taking earnings. He's taking the earnings of the slave. He says, no, go to the charity. You're a ward of the community. So we're able to draw from this that the master can't say to the slave. Rav, we clearly brought the proof that the master cannot. It was Rav's statement. For, from Rabbi Yochanan's ruling, it seems to be he could do it. No, medical sense of that, that Medical is something else. Because that, that, that's, that's restitution. With, that's, between, no, that's between you and the slave. He says to the man, you pay the doctor. You pay the doctor bills. But what are Shevis? Shevis is compensation for the, for the financial loss. But if you could take that, so you should pay. You should, you should support him. So, speaking with the master is feeding him. So why does he have to be supported from, 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 the, from the charity? La dofa, it's what to give him the extra. The och and nizim is funny to be boy like. So if that these the, the connotation these mean he sustained. That's the basic need. Mispanics means he supported. It's more than just being sustained. So the terminology. Let's continue.